always, I have the ladies with me. Mike, get in the building. How you doing? I'm a bit dull today. I'm oh, not feeling too well. What's dulling you up? I don't know. I'm not feeling too well. I, I just, for about two days now, I haven't been feeling myself, so. Oh. Um, you're pregnant. <laughs> in your dreams. <laughs> I can be pregnant. Um, I, w I wanted to talk about, um, th there was this thing I, um, I watched on TVC yesterday and another one on another TV station about these young girls who have been, or young children, mm. shot in the eye mm. by, yes. yeah. And, you know, the NDLE did one, I think it was the police that did the other child, and uh, Arome Sele and Amina Elege, and nobody is doing anything about them. And I think it's up to us to start to look. These children are going to lose their eyes. They're going to lose their sight if the government doesn't take responsibility for these children. So I thought I would use this platform mm. to say, please, please, and yeah. please. Yeah. That, that's enough assist, to, these, yeah. assist these families. That's enough to dampen your spirits, actually. Maybe that's really what the problem is. Uh, it, 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 I, I watched yeah. one yesterday, and then um, I watched another one this morning. I was like, Come on, these are kids. These are one is twelve years old, the other one is two years old or something. Like, come on, you come to use them anything to do it. Nima, how are you doing? I agree with you. I'm fine. I've, I saw the documentaries. Um, Doja did the Amina Legas uh, report. And yeah. Really, you know, just um, something that gives you reason to, to mm. reflect. And I hope that there are consequences, also compensation for the girls, at least something to ease their life. Lives, uh, other you know, more modern medical aids that can help them cope with life, and they should be doing that. They shouldn't be living in mystery, they should give them the psychosocial support. Dodger's emphasis was on psychosocial support. Um, me, I'm excited today because school closes finally today. <laughs> We're coming home, everybody, <laughs> my family will be one again. <laughs> You're going to pick her up. Immediately, today. Uh, my son came with me to work and we we're going together to pick. He did? Where is he? He's with his auntie. Oh, uh, Maria. <laughs> yes, uh, okay. they're always there now. So we'll go together to pick Madam after this. Oh, that's nice. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm Maka Fresh. How are you I, doing? I'm fine, thank you. Anything happening? Uh, it's been a long um, week for me, work week, um, yeah. because um, public holiday is tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So, yes, and money too. <laughs> so, um, as regards work, it's been crazy for me yes but i'm happy i'm excited to be here today. holiday has started tomorrow is public holiday mm -hmm. from yes, monday so. is public holiday yeah. so uh, even we are the shrine we're having the father son and holy smoke show oh yes on sunday right yeah ah, i heard it was even trended the, the publicity yes. trended quite a bit online i saw that online mm. all done fantastic the kids are also home you know i mean anytime, anytime they come home as excited as i am that they're home yeah it, it affects my economics the food obviously <laughs> the bread finishes <laughs> the milk finishes one day they will outgrow this house, house and, and then you have so much you missing but you wish that i'm wishing, I'm wishing but yeah. you know, when, I just, when i just come to the house like okay Mommy, bread has finished. I'm wondering why has bread finished. I just bought it yesterday <laughs> <laughs> they're snacking on it yeah, because in between yes, yeah the bread is breakfast it's not a snack you just go into the bed and you just keep taking it as a snack. So get snacks you from as a child. I used to snack has too much sugar. So I bet not too much snack. I don't know who you know, is confusing. I used to hold for sliced bread by myself. I would get back from You school. finish, imagine. You finish it. But wait, to one bread now is uh, 1,800 naira. Yeah, it's mm. expensive. One bread. One loaf. Yes. Of what? Slice bread. of bread. What kind of one bread? <laughs> like one bread. So I'm buying two. Now. I'm buying two three thousand six hundred naira. I'm buying. Two, it's like it's madness. What? Yes. One bread is almost yes. three thousand naira. Yes. Before I used to buy three three loaves. I used to buy three loaves. Now I've reduced it to two. Yeah. And now to now they, they eat it like in seconds. And like all those but just things. pace yourself that after like how many how long is the holiday? They're they, they here for, for a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of bread, give them yam. They will have yam, 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 yam self, one tuba is a uh, it's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. mm, a yam will last. Red will not. I have four kids, honey. They don't it doesn't last. Mm -hmm. They do yam board, yeah, they do yam chips, <laughs> they do, do everything. It doesn't work that way. Let's go to a break. It's Thursdays, our gist in neighbor first. Look at the front pages of the paper. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with uh, the nation. Tinubu raises two critical economic con um, condition teams, coordination teams actually. Slain army, 17 buried families get houses and scholarships. Rescued pupils reunite with their parents. 62 tax lines to become single digit. CBN measures unsettled forex dealers in Lagos and Abuja. Sonwolu Zodimma O2 to reconcile fielding APC chiefs. Stalemate over plans to pick new Olubadon. And um, LP returns Abure, reserves 2027 presidential ticket for OB. Which story are we starting with the nation? Picture story. Mm -hmm. So the president has done something for me very laudable, and I've seen the pattern. He has put value to life. Mm -hmm. He attended the burial of the 17 slain um, officers who were killed in this, the Delta State. Um, or, or, or how do I put it? Yes. Killed in Delta yes. State in the most nice way. And at the burial, he put he does not um, not just only honored them by his presence. He honored them by what he said, and he said he has he, he directed the pensions board for the army to immediately. Within 90 days, pay their entitlement. He also assured, assured their, survival, their dependents and survivors that their, each of their families will be given housing in any state of their choice, mm -hmm. anywhere they want. He also assured, uh, assured them, he honored them with um, uh, honors of the, the, the national honors. Um, let me take them, it's how he honored them turn by turn. So the slain officers are. Lieutenant Colonel A. H. Ali, Major General Safa, Major General D. U. B. and Captain uh, Zachary, and the soldiers are uh, Staff Sergeant Yaya Seidu, Corporal Yaya Dan Baba, Corporal Kabir Bashir, Lance Corporal Bulus Haruna, Sul uh, Okoyemi, Belo Anas, Haman Peter, Ibrahim Abdullahi, and the rest are Private I mm. Alaji Isa, Clement Francis, Abubakar Ali, Ibrahim Adamu, and Adamu Ibrahim, and they were laid to rest. At the National Cemetery yesterday in Abuja, the president was physically present. Along with him there was the speaker, the, the deputy senate president, and some governors. And he assured the families of these fallen heroes that they would get housing in any area of their choice. Full scholarship was awarded to their children to university level. Both, uh, both the children existing and unborn children, that is if they had pregnant wives, they did. They, and he gave posthumous uh, honors to a member of the Order of the Niger to four of the officers that uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Yaya Sedu got um, the Federal Medal, and the remaining 12 soldiers got the <coughs> posthumous Federal Medal, uh, FRM2. And he directed that their pensions, the pensions, ministry pensions, but to ensure that all their entitlements are paid within 90 days, not the usual. Uh, I hope it follows through. But the president has shown, because the last administration, couldn't even attend the burial of the chief of army staff who mm. died. In, you know, immediately he was appointed. And this was done in Abuja as well. This is the way you reassure the army. Mm. You boost their motivation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you reassure them that their lives matter, that their lives are not just, you know, scapegoat lives. Yeah. That, you know, are, are sacrificed it's for very, the country. Very, very impressive. This is how you impress, you, you, you know, you get there, you encourage them. And I must say it, he's always done this as a pattern. Because I remember his colloquium was cancelled because, you know, this is how you do this. If he keeps up this pattern... It's better tomorrow was cancelled. Oh, tell of us that I want to do say yeah, oh, you should feed. know about that. anything on papers. All that money wants Very to happen in papers. Use it and he's going to give them And he said they died for us. This soldiers died. For, that's what we must have at the back of our minds. They, these people choose to pay the ultimate price and defend this nation. Mm. And it should not be belittled. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have to it's not that this time we should be doing mm. the comparison. We will die for what? Mm. Okay. You know? yeah. Another story. Go okay. ahead, Maka. So I have um, Tinubu raises two critical economic coordination teams. Panels to monitor, evaluate key initiatives. Report outlining rejig within six months to be submitted in two weeks. To rejig the economy, two committees for ensuring comprehensive coordination and implementation of the federal government's plan were yesterday set up by President Bola Ahmed Tinobu. They are the Presidential Economic Coordination Council and the Economic Management Team Emergency Tax Force. The inauguration followed their approval by the Federal Executive Council on Monday. Announcing the two economy-focused initiatives in a statement, Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Ajuri Ngalali, said the PECC, which will be chaired by President Tinubu, will consist of 31 members, 
made up of key government officials and members of organized private sectors. You know, I like how, um, mm. the, the, uh, how the president is really pushing for to stabilize the economy. Yeah. So setting up this 31 um, uh, member committee, it's amazing because everybody is going to um, pull in their own ideas. Yes. And I just hope it's not just about setting up a committee. Yeah. There's also um, the action behind yeah. you know, the ideas and the reforms that they want to bring on board. And it's mixed with private sector and public sector. Yeah, private and sector so that you can like, feel yeah. what is needed in private sector yes. um, and then try to balance it off with you know, the laws, the reforms, and you know, everything going on right okay. now in the economy. I was uh, going to take the Ului Badon. The new Ului Badon that they're supposed to swear in is yeah. missing in action. So they, they, haven't, they are worried because they haven't seen him. They said they, they, his whereabouts are unknown. Uh, they've to preside, he was supposed to be presiding over their meetings because they're supposed to carry his name to the governor to swear him in. Um, so the um, Ului Bado Oba Edi Uyewole has had to step in and uh, do preside over the meetings. But because I read it in both papers, Punch and Nation, yes. in the Punch it said uh, that his son. his son said he's, he's, he's all right. He's still unhappy. It's just that he was not in town. When he was when the old Olu Ibadan yeah. passed on, and so he just decided to rest. So he's resting, and when when, when he has rested, because as yeah. his, everybody will be visiting him, so yeah. let him rest. rest. Okay, I have the story on the rescue people. So the Kuriga um, school children rescued in Zamfara after 16 days in captivity will be handed over to their parents today. The nation gathered yesterday that their parents met with them at the Kaduna Women and Children's Shelter where they were receiving the psychosocial treatment. I think, I think Nima mentioned it earlier. Uh, and however, it's not clear if the six of the children admitted into the Dalat Barak Hospital uh, were among those that would be meeting with their parents. But they're hoping that all the children will be handed over to their children. Some of the parents were seen embracing the children while some shed tears of joy to see and be reunited to their children alive. So during the so. I'm really happy about that. So today, we officially hand it over to the kids. Okay, let's go on a short break. Now, we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Here's what a good hair day looks like and feels... Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it. Women. So, if you catch the drift, then you're on to something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities. Right here, within this beautiful cocktail we call the black table. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas. It shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move way in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting, as the arts are meant to be.
Emergency teams get six months to rescue economy. SIM and NIN subscribers kick against Friday deadline demand extension. Crisis hit Eco Disco chairman directors disagree on MD sacking. Defense Intelligence Agency holding abducted Lagos editor says IPI. Ulubadon designates healthy will appear soon in public says Sun. An NLC falls Abu's return LP tips OB for 2027. Okay, which story? I have the Eco Disco story. This is very because it's, it's looking like the former MP boss and the story around her. So the MD CEO of um, Eco Disco, Mrs. Tina Adesanda, was uh, um, supposedly relieved from her uh, 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 um, position and added back to WPG Limited, the co investor who seconded her to Eco Disco, according to them. And this was single signed by the chairman of the company, um, Mr. Duru Etubo, Otubo, the EKDC chairman, single-handedly signed a letter, you know, relieving her of her duties. But now we have the, and replacing her with the head of commercial, and we have the um, director, a director and a chairman of the legal and regulatory committee of the company, Mr. Babo Erego, Ere, Egerego, who is disagreeing, saying that you know, they only asked those involved in a fraud investigation, those connected to an alleged fraud and negligence investigation, to be sec to be to step aside. And this does not include Mrs. Um, Etino Adesanda, but the uh, um, chairman, probably for personal reasons, mm. you know, has done this. And he says that the chairman cannot as represent the board in a singular position, and that you know, the, um, the contract of employment of Mrs. Sander is in compliance and with the other directives of the NERC because the chairman is basing it on not co non compliance with the NERC directives. He says so he doesn't know. They say, he said the said order of the NERC hearing displayed are unambiguous and incapable of and unyielding to plural interpretations. Mm. There was no way in that order where the NERC requested the removal of any staff, either seconded to or hired by EKDCSF, those connected to the alleged fraud and negligence. And he named them. Wala Joseph Kondoti, Sherry Adegbero, and Ike Aleke, who are the individuals being investigated. But in some way, they found a way to just, okay. you know, add. I think that happens to me now. You know, uh, hey, <laughs> and, and slide, and and slide their <laughs> name and <laughs> tell that to go. He said, Mr. Adere Otubu's letter, therefore, was done in bad faith and in vengeful revenge against the MDCO for escalating the alleged fraud and issuing queries against one of his protégés, whom he had desperately sworn to protect by all means. Rather than comply with the order of the NRC, a recourse to subterfuge was hatched and the purported termination. There are okay. no doubts that a deliberate agenda and unconcealed mischief or to misread the orders of the NRC to malign Mrs. Sonda's reputation um, for daring to escalate the issue and queries to Walla Joseph Kondoti for alleged fraud through the yeah, more use information of ghost workers for three years. Mm -hmm. So this, the audit com uh, committee which these members made, uh, made of for refused to investigate ghost workers for three years. But how does it extend to the MDCEO's position? I don't like cheating in my life. That cheating, I don't like. I hope it's investigated. And yeah, yes, look at, look at all around. Another, another story in point. Point. The Nigerian chapter of the International Press Institute have, have said on Wednesday that they they're missing you. There's this editor that was taken away. Mm -hmm. um, they thought he was abducted. Mm -hmm. um, but they have now traced the, his whereabouts to the Defense Intelligence Agency. The army had told the punch that he had no hands in the arrest of the editor. But somebody who, um, on the condition of anonymity, had said that um, he's in the agency, the DIA. His wife says he's asthmatic and he has an ulcer and nobody has had access to him for 12 days. The, so they're saying, look, please, I charge him to court. If you're charging him to court, they, they came to the house, abducted him in, in the world in uniform, and they took him away even while the wife was begging, please. And they said the constitution says you cannot hold a uh, yeah. resident for longer than 48 hours. Mm. Okay. And that's the punch? Yes. So, SIM, NIN, subscribers kick against Friday deadline demand extension. Yes, because like last week, I went to Glue Office because they kept threatening to cut off my line. And I was wondering why, because I'd already um, imputed my, my name online, right? So, why are you threatening to cut me off? And I went, when I went to the office, and it was a rigorous process. So, 
Yes, so let me um, take what they said on that. He said the National Association of Telecommunications subscribers has requested that the Nigerian Communications Commission extend the deadline scheduled for the disconnection of telephone lines not linked to the national identification numbers beyond Friday, March the 29th, 2024. The subscriber's body argued that telcos agents were failing to capture all necessary information needed for verification, just as it is also cited, just as it also cited difficulties in uploading the captured data on the National Identity Management Commission's server. So yes, I think they should extend it because the tra you, you, you pay for your subscription, they try to impute it online, and then you still have to go to their office. Glow office is in VI. I had to go all the way to VI. Sat there for like three hours just to do this. It doesn't make sense. So they should figure a way out. And when you still get there, they're not... When is the deadline? Um, it's supposed to be 29 tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh. Yeah, now they want to push it because it's not fair to people. People have work to do. I had to leave work. Mm. People have meetings. So people came from afar. And when you get there, they're not even... Um, there's no structure in place. Organized. I sat down somewhere for an hour before they told me that no, I'm in the wrong <laughs> place. When Imagine. they almost got to my turn, I had to go somewhere else. Then the, the, the boss not came out. Organization. Yeah, the, the boss not came out to say, oh, someone else will attend to us. We saw that the person said, no, but their own laptop is not meant for <laughs> NI verification. It's meant <laughs> for new SIM. We had to move. It, it, it was such a stressful day for me at Glue. Yes, in VI. So I think they should do something about this because you can't just cut off people. Yes, yeah, live. And just put it's something on live on hold. Exactly. All right, so the Chief of Defense Staff, Major General Christo Major Christopher Musa, vowed that those behind the deaths of the military personnel in Delta will be hunted down. Specifically, he said that to the perpetrators of violence who seek to sow division and fear among our people, know this, our resolve will not waver. Uh, we will hunt you down, bring you to justice, and restore peace and security to every nook and cranny of this country. He admitted that though the death and grief of, of those really affected them, um, the perpetrators would pay for the deaths of the soldiers, and they would definitely, their evil actions would, that has caused pain and suffering to families would not um, go unpunished. Um, okay, moving on quickly now to Daily Sun. Tinubu offers scholarship to slain soldiers' children. Ohanese demands more states in Southeast. Dangote Elumelu Cardoso Rabi Agbaje appointed into Presidential Economic Coordination Council. Government supports ginger farmers with 1.6 trillion. Uh, no, 1.6 billion naira worth of imputes. Mm. E um, eco discord crisis escalates as shareholders fight over control. APC names Uzodima or two others party zonal coordinators. Obasanjo prefers solution to banditry and kidnapping. And LP, NLC, rejects Aburu's re-election. Party reserves 2027 presidential tickets for Peter Obi. Okay, which story are we starting with in, the in um, Punch in Sorry. Daily Sun? Okay, the story is taken. Okay, let me go ahead. Okay. So, Haneze demands um, more states in the southeast. Haneze Ndibo yesterday demanded the devolution of power in the ongoing constitutional review by the National Assembly. This is as Enugu State Governor Peter Mba. Um, he charged Ndibo to rediscover their innate economic potential and avoid acts capable of self-destruction. President General of Haneze, Chief Emmanuel Iwanyawu, who stated this at a retreat for Igbo leaders in Enugu, also reiterated the call for creation of additional state for the Southeast, noting that the Igbo were not happy with the skewed nature of the 1999 constitution. He stated that the group still stood by its Oka declaration on constitution review after the 2018 special summit. Yes, so they're asking for more states, and I'm sure this also has to do with... Um, when, when it comes to the allocation. Resource them. control. Yes, resource control. So mm. that if we have more states in the southeast, mm. time for allocation and resource control, we have mm. we, we, we bigger, we have more. Bigger, more share. More share. <laughs> bigger <laughs> share. Can, they, right. can they just make every street a state? <laughs> so that we can <laughs> get this can allocation. Get allocation. I'm telling so, you, right? um, Let's see how that goes with the constitution, mm. constitutional review. Yeah. And let's see what's going to happen. what happens. Yeah. The National yes. Agricultural Development Fund, NADF, um, are providing support valued at 1.6 billion naira impute package to ginger farmers in three states, including the FCT. The impute support is under the GREAT package, which is Ginger Recovery Advancement and Transformation for Economic Empowerment. So if you're a ginger farmer, this is good news, especially if you're in those states. Um, he disclosed that the launch of the Ginger Blight Epidemic Control Task Force Support Initiative supported by the Office of the, Federal, of the, of the Vice President According to 15,000 ginger farmers across Kaduna, Plato, Nasarawa, and the FCT 
were affected by the recent ginger blight epidemic in the country and will be supported with these funds. So hopefully those within that sector can enjoy the opportunity. <laughs> Vanguard, yes, let's so find a story. We're not taking calls for stoppage of ex-governors and president's pension race dust. Abu re-elected, LP national chairman as NLC kicks. Fears over debt sustainability mounts, threaten CBS bid to tame inflation. Uh, VP Shatima expresses confidence as Naira strengthens further. Dangote Elumelu, others set up economic, uh, listed as Tinumbu set up economic committee. And uh, let's see, I think that's the story. Shira, who has the story in Vanguard? Okay, so I have the vice president story. So with the um, Naira appreciating to 1,340 to the dollar um, on Tuesday, between 1,340 and 1,350 to the dollar, and in the official market um, uh, Naira um, had a 0.2% gain at 1,300 per dollar. He is um, expressing and reassuring Nigerians that the Naira will continue to gain and con uh, Naira would, would continue to stabilize in the coming weeks and months. And this is follow uh, validated by the position of the CBN Monetary Policy Committee, which um, raised its monetary policy rate by another 200 basis points to 24.75%. Um, the MPC continues um, to focus more on stabilizing Naira and prioritizing this stability against the inflation rate. So we have um, a positive light. All right. Take one more story and then we're done. Okay. Fears over debt sustainability mounts, threatening CBN's bid to tame inflation amidst fresh upsurge in public debt financial and public affairs analysts have expressed fears that nigeria's debt service ratio may become unmanageable while more borrowing, borrowing is beginning to crowd out private sector funding nigeria's total public debt stock rose by 10.73 percent quarter on quarter to 97.34 trillion naira in the fourth in the fourth quarter of 2023 from 87.91 trillion in the third quarter of 2023 Wow, that's a lot. Okay, that's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, we want our sponsored segment. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned, your view will be right back. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports. A sprinkling of current affairs. Some very deep topical issues. And last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it. Women. So, if you catch the drift, then you're on to something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities, right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be.
Welcome to Pure Entertainment. What would you like to order from our menu today? We have the regular. So let me go and for my jam. So <laughs> my 20 was 320. <laughs> I suppose don't be one well, metal. Not, uh, <laughs> I know you mean like that's <laughs> your At answer. this point, I contest my jam. I, I, I want to close I, the I, show. I can go. I can. Yeah, that's I can all we can Nigeria, take. I choose AJ to close the show. You for that long. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, number one unavailable by David on featuring <laughs> Musa Kids. We also have today's chef special. Yo, shine, 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 shiny, yeah. So here, recap done, and it's time for number one on the countdown. One of Nigeria's hottest artists right now, his name is Rema, and this one is called Charm. Kick it. Another. For dessert and a beef of nightcap, we have the nighttime and online specials. I want to start the gym, yeah? But do you know one thing that's actually keeping me back? You should start the gym, though, you're getting fat. Cricket. She says she does show dancing to empower women. What's the difference? There's a difference. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. So that side, you're already almost naked. naked. You're you already almost <laughs> naked. No, <laughs> the empowerment for me. Sex can make your relationship better. No. Sex can never be overrated. It is needed. Especially when it's good sex too. Almost every guy has been with somebody's girlfriend. But they are for all of us now. This is. <laughs> That's why you're still single. I would not agree or disagree with that because I don't want to get into trouble. I, I have a home to go to. Your next question. Oh, you ready to fail? Who is the best I used to suspect? That woman. Bam, bam. Ah. Yeah, today, yeah, jammy, yeah, today we'll go yeah. Hey. Hmm. Uh, let's catch up. And don't been able to satisfy your cravings, yeah? Stay <laughs> good. Tafsir by great Islamic scholars. Ask the Sheikh for clarity on Ramadan and Islam. What's more, you can learn and win great prizes on the Ramadan quiz segment. All spiced up with soul stirring nasheed. Asking for a sign from you because I'm so broke inside. Ramadan Kareem on TV. Hmm. So. Have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues. W.TVCcommunications.tv Ramadan Kari. Thanks for staying with us. You know, today is Thursday. It's our Justin day where we discuss family, uh, relationships, parenting, and, and, and the works. So today, we're discussing um, when you go visit your in-laws. Uh, what is the modus operandi? And we're going to be taking our conversations from two um, online um, um, posts that we saw. One was from Pastor Mrs. Um, Adejumo, where she was saying that... Um, so just talking to singles in the, in the singles conference, um, sharing practical steps on what a young lady should do when she goes to visit her in-laws for the first time, how she should dress, how she should look, how she should sit, how she should engage them, how um, you know, the entire behavior when you go into your in-laws house for the first time. 
then we juxtapose that conversation with a post where a woman shares her thoughts on how both genders are treated when visiting their prospective in-laws. So according to her, a man will visit his in-laws and be treated like royalty. You know, the woman will visit her in-laws and be expected to audition for the role of a maid. The game is triggered. So uh, this comes after clergy woman, obviously, as I said, Mrs. Funke Adichimo, also said women should have a way of behaving with their in-laws. What are your thoughts on this? Um, it's quite interesting because um, we are trained in a certain way, but as society is evolving, people are seeing things differently, they are doing things differently, even um, in-laws are doing things differently these days. Call us on 0810764-1679-0902416340. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read the tweets. I was just laughing when I was reading this thing because... <laughs> You know, when I was going to visit my own in-laws for the very first time, I mean, I'm one of those ignorant Lagosians that, you know, you don't go outside this small, small tiny box called Lagos. So I was being driven all the way at the time to Ife, and I think it was my first time going to Ife. And, you know, I was just, I didn't even know, I was so excited. And I entered there, I was just confused, what do I do? Of course, I'm a Yoruba girl, I knelt down, the whole works. You know, and I wasn't sure if I should go into the kitchen. So I was just doing the whole go to the kitchen, try to help out. And they said, Don't worry, just stay in the living room. We're not asking you to. You know, I was just trying so hard because I spent the weekend over there, you know, and I'm not a kitchen. So when they did the gunyo gunyo thing, I just stayed and I tried to help them. And I tried and I was just awful at it. They said, Don't bother, we'll just do it. So I just stood in the kitchen. I didn't want to sit in the living room. I stayed there with the kitchen. And I, I it was, I mean, it was just an experience. Of course, when I got home, my mother was questioning me. So, I tell me, what happened as you enter? What did you do? What was the first thing? Like, she wanted to know every step, of, every step I did, what the step I took. And it was just an interesting uh, experience. When I was hearing Pastor Funke Adejimo talk about it, it was quite familiar in the sense that, okay, everybody is apprehensive about taking that first visit to your in-laws because you don't know what's expected. So, let me come to you. What are your thoughts on this issue of visiting in-laws and the way people are treated. Because when my husband came to the house, nobody was expecting him to go to the kitchen. He was welcomed like, ah, brown, you're welcome. You know, my husband, my mother was happy to see him. They have cooked the whole house, them to serve him, you know. Everybody was waiting for Mr. Brown, for family at the time to come. So it was different somewhat. But um, what are your own experiences and how would you um, take this um, comment? It's, it's, really, it's really not a, you know, this life, no balance kind of thing. No balance. No balance at all. <laughs> So it's the same. It's really our culture. But what uh, Pastor Adejumo said is something that I totally agree. It's the same conversation your mother has with you when you're visiting your in-laws. Same conversation your aunties have with you. When they come back, they still test you on those same grounds. How did you sit? How did you look? Hope you did not eat too much. Hope you did not stretch too much. Hope you did not talk too much. You know, all of those things. So there's nothing new there. Mm. If anybody has any reaction to what she has said, I don't know where you're coming from. It depends on maybe the kind of family you're raised. But the issue for me is that the standard they give a girl. They are visiting for the first time. We've seen videos of guys who say that the girl did not collect broom from their mother. Which mother chooses not to clean the house before the girl comes? You see that. And the mother will not be at fault. That I'm visiting my in-laws for the first time. They will leave the house dirty, upside down for me to come and clean. To so ask my test. Why? Are we auditioning for housemaid? We've seen all sorts of uh, things that, you know, they will say the girl comes. That was not the, the first day. If I'm looking for husband, you have not found a good wife. What you have simply found is somebody that needs a husband. Because I'll just make sure that you marry me. Mm. I will call everyone. I will make sure I sweep you. If your mother, I will sweep her leg to sweep everything. I will just make sure I impress you people with my, and hide my bad behavior. You know, but the test, people, they still keep putting girls to that test. Yeah. If the girl was in a relationship and just wanted to find, maybe she would be herself and then they would still judge. So we've seen that debate all the time. Why is it always different? When, the, when my husband visited, my mother take her hand. In fact, for my nikah, my mother used her hand over the months when they were play, preparing for the nikah to break the melon that they used to cook and goosey for, for him. Everything from her farm, her garden, I would do it myself. She, everything. I said, ah, ah, I hope they will do the same for me. And when I went there, they did not do it like that for me. I kept looking at her. <laughs> so you see, it was nobody passing. I want to share, share the video that comes to Amaka. Um, let's see the video of um, mm -hmm. Pastor Funke Adejumo. Why is that that first tree you don't go with a gift or something too big maybe just a basket of fruit or something or a part for mama when you get there depending on your culture in my culture we need to greet elders 
I said, you will girl, you will kneel down and remain on your knees. And you will let your eyes look down. He said that you'll be staring at the mama and the baba and everybody there. Let them tell you to stand up before you stand up. Even if you're an extrovert, please pretend that day. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Stand up. Ah, my daughter, stand up. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Okay? So you stand up. When you get in, sit on the very first seat. Don't walk around, you know, the length of the house. Just enter and sit down. When you sit down, you may not realize they may be watching you through the keyhole because you've gone there for your entrance exam. Your own is more than the man. So, you calmly remember what you wear. It will not be something you'll be looking for scarf and be pushing like this and then one high heel shoe that you are shaking. No, 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 no. Be as comfortable as possible. Not that your cleavage, everything is opening. If you must look around, turn your eyes, not your head. Turn, be calm, you know, and all that. If they ask you any question, answer briefly. Where are you from? Will you in another state of Nigeria? It's just, you know, as calmly as possible. If they are discussing or the TV is on, don't open your eyes and say, Ah! You see about such Oh my God, you know? Shh! Sweet, you know, now. I put it. Did you vote that day, Mama? You know, I know you will not finish food if they serve you, but please, if the meat is tough, don't pull it. Just leave it like that. And make sure that no oil spills on your dress. As soon as you finish eating, I know you won't finish everything, you know, just a little. Even if you're hungry, go and drink curry when you get home. But, you know, just carry your plate. Make attempts to pack. Ah, my dear, leave it. Ask, ask. No, ma, thank you, ma. <laughs> thank you, ma. Just be looking down. Just be am I pretending? No, I'm being diplomatic. Carry the plate, you go to the kitchen, you wash. Yes, you wash the plate. Some of Go to your boyfriend's houses and you wash plates there. So we're talking about your in-laws now. Shh. Singles, we'll meet again. <laughs> All right, so these are conversations many aunties and mothers have in private yes. with when you're going to, but because it's out in the open, it now sounds different. Let me come to Marco. What are your thoughts on the new year? You mm. felt that is like pretend mm. you said. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a huge believer of the fact that you don't go anywhere without bearing a gift. Even when I came here for my audition, yes. I came with a gift. Because there's an adage that says, gift opens up a way for a mm. man. Mm. Very important. It, 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 is, it softens the ground. So I agree with some of the things she says, but I disagree with a lot of things that she said. Um, one, being that you should learn, she used the word pretend. You should, you should draw, learn to draw a line be, between being diplomatic and pretending. You're going for, this is, when you're going to meet your in-laws for the first time, it's like an audition, both for male and female. I don't believe, it's like going for an interview. I don't believe you should present a part of yourself that is not true. Mm. Because when you start the job, just like an interview, you say, oh, I, I, I work under pressure. <coughs> and I'll tell you that there's a campaign coming up. You have to be closing at midnight. You now say, but it's not possible. Then you don't have to work under pressure. That means everything you say in the interview is wrong. Mm. So it's important to present the best part of yourself well, let, the be let, let, let it be the best part of yourself that is actually true. I disagree in her saying that, oh, when you're eating, you have to make sure you don't spill on yourself. Every normal, decent human being knows not to spill on themselves. But then, if it happens, it happens. Sometimes when you're trying too hard, you make mistakes. Mm. I just believe that every, every well-cultured woman or man, well brought up and trained, when you walk into a place, this is Africa, where you have elders, you kneel down, you greet. Even if you don't kneel down, you genuflate. You show, that, you show the sign respect. of respect, right? That's a well brought up person. How you dress when you're going somewhere, when you're going to church, when you're going to the club, the way you dress. If I expect someone that has common sense to know how to dress to, um, to visit mm. their in-laws, right? And then, if you want to eat, please eat your food. <laughs> like I said, I, I said I, sometimes you make too much, this, uh, too much rules mm. where there are no rules. Mm. And, if you're, if, and if you like to have a conversation, don't go because you're auditioning for a role of wife or husband. You get somewhere and then you start acting timid. Please don't do that. I love great conversationalists. I love people that are intelligent. When you come to a space, don't, even though you're not talking too much, but then answer mm. with confidence. Show that you're a confident person. Mm. I don't want a man 
or a woman that is going to portray that they are not confident, then what are you going to pass on to my grandchildren? Mm. What do you want to teach that, my that's grandchildren? That's an interesting way of looking you understand? at it. Mm. Yes, these days we are trying to empower women and push for women equality and gender. So why do you want a young girl to come to your home and be timid just to please you? That's mm. a no-no. Is it that they like you or they don't? And if they don't like you, it's okay. There are one million and a Baka, trillion. you are agreeing and disagreeing. Not yes, yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. You already said that. Some I, yes, I said I agree with some of the things she hey, said. No, but even the things you said, you disagree. Like, mm. you know, you said it's when you eat, you need, if it happens, you know, you know better than to have to... But to mistakes be, happen. To find yourself where you are cleaning up. But yeah, but then mistakes know? happen. Are you going to kill yourself? But you're yourself? not timid when you're careful. You need to be careful. You just have to be. It's your first impression. Yeah, t being you timid know? and being careful, they are two different things. Mm. When anybody, even if you got on a date with the man that, 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 that is that, whom, I'm sure you, everybody is careful about the eat because you don't want to mm. stain your dress. I'm just trying to say that. Be, be comfortable that if it happens, you won't beat yourself up. Mm. Because you stained your outfit. It ha mistakes mm. happen. Mm. Your mm. in-laws should be able to even bring the cloth and water and to say, oh, sorry, it's okay, mm. clean yourself. You okay. should be, you're, you're being married into a wife. Let me come to, to, to Waiki. Waiki, what are your thoughts want, on this? I want to say, you know, I, I, there is this um, play that I'm, I've been watching. Um, it's a soap. And it's called Another Worst Marriage. And the girl, before she entered the house, she was friendly with everybody. She was pretending. Mm -hmm. The minute she entered, the katakata she has caused. She, mm -hmm. she has <laughs> caused katakata. Mm -hmm. She's fought from the mother. She has slapped the mother. She has slapped the brother. Mm -hmm. She's just a horrible. So, this is my own advice is to the in-laws. Mm -hmm. Please, beg your daughter not to be to be herself the minute she steps into that house. Mm -hmm. Because if she doesn't show you her true color, this one is even personal to me, but I, I will use yeah. mm. code. Because mm. <laughs> me, <laughs> I was a normal. The last daughter, don't worry. We know. I wasn't the last daughter. <laughs> I was a normal human being yeah. who uh, I would greet if I had to kneel down. I would kneel down, but, but I, I there were no airs and grace. I, I didn't pretend to yeah. be who I wasn't. Another person pretended <laughs> to be. Mm -hmm. uh, what, when they, they compare, say, look at this one. She, see this one. She's mm -hmm. always kneeling yeah. down. This one. See, your mother, see, when she now finally entered, everybody, go and sit down your, don't come near my, so don't come so it mm -hmm. is, so beg, so I'm begging in-laws now, mm -hmm. beg your daughter-in-law to be, be herself, to be who she is, because if she doesn't show you, Eh? Is but, there money did more? Well, so, you, you know, you know, uh, is that because mm -hmm. yes, there will not, after yeah. she has finished pretending and acting and sitting on the mm -hmm. corner of the chair, mm -hmm. when you come to the house, she will sit in the middle and say, Auntie, I exactly. don't even want you in my house. Yeah, mm -hmm. move. Ah. But do you think, look, looking at it in a different way, mm -hmm. do you think even all this advice that we give to both men and women is a way of somewhat weakening the men? And the reason why I say that is because. A man should be able to be bold enough and confident in whoever he is is marrying. Mm -hmm. If I'm marrying an atasuas, somebody who is a firecracker, mm -hmm. I am confident I'm bringing that firecracker home and I'm able to defend her that, okay, she's a firecracker and I love her like that. Exactly. If she's the humble type, the, you know, because there's some families where mm -hmm. the, the whole family is, is a firecracker like Nima's, Nima will tell you that in, that in our culture, they are firecrackers. But if somebody comes in quiet and peaceful, doesn't like to abuse anybody, you know, she can come in to be herself. And her, and her brother will say, listen, I, this is what I want. She's not one of those that will be joking and laughing and abusing. She's a very quiet person, doesn't talk too much. That is fine. So, does it, if, we, if we keep up this appearance of, okay, we have to, this, this is the modus operandi when you go and see your in-laws. Does it weaken the, the, the men such that they're not able to defend who they are marrying? They're not able to say, this is who I have chosen. With or without ability to eat properly, with or without ability to kneel down to the ground, because some of them marry foreigners that don't understand these things. So, is is is, the, is 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 do you think when we put these rules out, it somewhat weakens the man's ability to defend or be confident in who he's marrying? So there's an age where this can apply. What you just said. So when the man is much younger, less able to stand his ground, and you know it's more difficult to stand your ground against your own loved ones, your family members. Mm. You know, that's when this influence can happen. When a man is far, I've seen it all. Mm. There's a level to what you can say that can change his mind. So I've been to some families where they will say, ah, you see this member of family, anybody in marriage, no, could not just accept them. 
My other sister's husband, I remember her uh, people are there from Jebu, and they, she was saying, the mother was saying, Boop. Anybody he brings, anyhow she be. So we, they usually, when I dated Yoruba, they used to tell us kubo kubo. They call us, you know, in such. So one even was very detrimental to how she addresses me. And I put the in-laws on test because I just felt ah, if I have to be on my toes all the time. Now I remember saying to the person that if I marry you, my kids will also have to be on their toes all the time. So this is your parents' continuous standards. I can't keep up. You know, there's no point. I have tried. You know, when I come to the house, I don't kneel from my family, where I'm from. I'm learning it every day. My parents, we hug, we do. I don't know how to kneel. And you met me in my house. You never saw me kneel. I went to your house. I never saw your sisters when they wake up kneel. You know? And I saw them. Everybody came out that morning. I visited. Everybody walked past. And I walked past. Nobody was kneeling to anybody. But when I left, I was being judged to, to not yeah. having knelt down. I was like, ah. Why is the standard double standard? <laughs> it's, if it is the culture of your family, everybody will be doing it. It will be natural for me to do. Mm. So one of my sisters married from a culture where every woman approaches the head of family, they are on their knees. In fact, when we, because uh, I was the one that escorted her home, everybody that came in, I saw all the women going on their knees. So my sister too was nearly, after I knelt to the third, I said, this is 14 nearly, I'm not going to continue. You are the one they marry, continue nearly. You know, we, you, what you see is easy to follow. So the family might have a rule and tradition. It's mm. okay. My in-laws, no girl kneels for anybody in my own in-laws house. So it is wrong for them to expect it of me, who is also coming from a no-kneel culture. The problem I have is those double standards. Where one mother will say, you know, as the matriarch, this is how I want you to behave. Mm. This is what I want you to put extra pressure. And when a man is not man enough at that time, he will think, oh, this person is looking out for me. They will keep telling you, it's our culture, we are teaching now to be a good girl. Oh, eventually, they will destroy. If the girl truly loved you and you did not stand up, they will destroy whatever respect was left that the girl had for you. Mm. So a man who is more mature can escape this. But Africans, we've always seen it. The double standards and how they use it to control a man who's not, not yet there. Mm. Imagine that you're finding out later that all the culture they created was for your own wife. All the other wives, it was different culture for them. Okay, my own problem, my own problem is, why are, are you put under tests? Well, it, it's as if it is a favor for that man to marry me. Mm. He's doing me a favor. I, we are doing each other a favor. Thank you. It's, you know, it's so the, the way they make it seem is as if, oh, the woman, uh, they are married you, you, you would have just been walking around the streets exactly. without mm. husband. Mm. There, there is no award you get for being married now. Mm -hmm. There's no award, so... Uh, no, there's but some men, they, 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 they want to be working for you. No matter that some men need to go through a test, because some men actually marry up. Yes. Into, into the married women, women that are successful, mm -hmm. they have great jobs, great family, great pedigree, and when they come in, they, they, they go through the same scrutiny. Where they see, okay, this one is he a gold digger? Is he going? To, does he have the capacity to take care of my child? Is he educated? So they also have their own. It's not, it's not all that like, they get. It's very easy. Some of them actually go through a lot of hard tests. Yeah. So um, for me, like what um, Nima said, um, aside from it being a maturity thing, I also think it also has to do with personality traits. Okay. So some people are more confident in who they are. So people can stand up to mm. anybody. Mm -hmm. Because they, 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 they won't just let you press them down, both yeah. male and female, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you're with a man, when you're dating a man, you should know the type of man that you're dating, whether he's young <laughs> or old. Because there are some older men that also push overs in terms of their family. They yeah. will always please their family over you, yeah. okay? So it depends on when you're dating someone or, or your choice in a man. You have to want to be with a man that can stand up for you, stand up for, he, for you as, yeah. a, as his woman, stand up for his immediate family. That's really important. Mm -hmm. Some women might want something different. You know, like I always say, people want different things. Some women like men that are timid because of, set, of whatever reasons. So it all depends on mm. marry your type, yeah. marry your kind. I've always yeah. been an advocate of that. But then, secondly, when you talk about marrying up or marrying down, I also think it has to, um, you know, it, the, in this interview is both ways. The same way people are trying to interview me, I'm trying to interview whether people are. Whether people are what's me being, you look at look at the whole me, <laughs> my family background, everything I've achieved. My, my at least I went to school. Yes. Yeah. At least I know my nose not go one side. <laughs> then I want to come and give you people children with pointed ah. nose. Uh uh. Yeah. Treat me nice. Be nice to me. So it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it goes both ways. Yeah. yeah. It goes yeah. both ways. So a lot, it should a lot, actually go. A lot both of ways. men. A lot of men actually feel also that they are being interviewed. Because they feel that the, 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 um, the, the parents of their in-laws or their in-laws 
feel they don't have the they're not competent enough to be their daughter's husband either because of the kind of job they do and i know somebody who he felt quite intimidated i was marrying a girl a wealthy family and he was having a this he's a lawyer he was getting a decent job a decent salary and he was driving a very very this regular car compared to what she was driving but he was quite intimidated going to the farm because when he got there according to what he, he mentioned to me he said that when he got there they were asking him if he had a domiciliary account mm. you know with, with their conversations oh, about uh -huh. it no, no, as too, as in, too the conversation was, was with the brothers talking about something mm. they wanted to support him but he, ah, he has never heard of a domiciliary so, account you know so he felt he felt really little when he was leaving that house i think it was deliberate I think that is deliberate. And like I said, these things are based on some people's biases within the family. Mm -hmm. Except that it is the culture that they do to their children that they're asking of you. It cannot just be based on somebody's, okay, this is how I want you to bend neck. I remember when my husband came. I saw how jittery he was when he sat with my dad. Every of our suitors, when they approached, sitting with my, because the conversations are tough conversations of how you've been to school, what your dreams are, how you plan your life. And all of that. It's not about when you ask for domiciliary account, share the person is doing forex. You know, it's, it's the, uh, the person is into oil and gas. Do you, you think that they need a forex account? Because it must be he must be geared towards protecting and loving the girl. It's not any other that thing. So he has to we pass not, that. We test. have not answered the question on the video mm. of Mrs. Ade of Pastor mm. Funke Adejimo because mm. what she was advocating for is what many mothers mm. and aunties actually tell daughters we so we shouldn't things. pretend mm. because we are seeing somebody saying no, it out no. there mm. why are we not making look as if we have not heard it no, before so that it's it totally wrong focused on the girl no, my, in yes. that video mm. and focusing on the girl no. i mm. agree with some things mm. but if it's a you know they put that will finish my food i will finish my food you know i agree that you just have to be prim and proper on your first visit because you're making a first impression. Uh -huh. now we're somewhere. All our mothers, and remember my let me now go to, me, let me, give you that. Let me now come to America. Do you agree that that very first Your first date, impression is important. Do you have to be prim and proper? Okay, so it depends on your definition of first dates. No, first date to try and see the so in-laws, in not first date to the, the guy. No, not with the guy. That's what I'm saying now. the guy, with the, the in-laws. In that's what I'm with saying the now, with the father and the mother now. Yeah. That's why I said it depends on your definition of first day. Okay. Why do I say definition of first day? Some people date, and then they're always around their parents or whatever, right? And then maybe you've met the parents in the social okay, setting, okay, okay, okay. or maybe you've slept over in their house that is not really that uh, meeting of the in-laws and mm, stuff. Mm. Do you understand? I believe that before I go to that first visit of meeting the in-law, we'll have had informal meetings. Before we now have that particular person, I want to even, before we even get to that point, I get serious that we're going for that presentation. No, no, no. Yes, no. no. What? Oh, no, no. Okay. So the thing is, mm. usually, even that social, mm. informal gathering is mm. like, okay, your mom sees at home, you're stopping by. It's your first day going to come and say hello. They're going to be seeing you for the very first time. They have never they heard that he has yeah. a girlfriend. No, no. But Amaka is giving us different, there are different well, yes, this, So this one is so my, the guy family is going. before my husband. husband. His mom came to visit me and meet me in my and house for the first time. So are and we really on the first, first time? So some arrangement where you have the girl and the fa you've been family friends and you're married. Mm. You're not meeting your in-laws. They're announcing for the first time. So announcement is different from, different you know. From so there are different circumstances. Let me go me, when I went visiting, mm. I didn't used to talk, oh. Me that I was a parrot. Uh -huh. mm. oh. You see, why did you mm. not talk? You Confirm wanted to make me. a first impression. I wasn't making a first impression. Uh -huh. I was just pretending to be who I wasn't. Which is what we are saying now that pretense is not good. Yeah, yeah, I was tired of making impression. I scatter everything. Uh -huh, because you make your name. I wasn't cooking. Because that's not who you are. I go to if I go to 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 if I go. I went to the kitchen. Me that I know my kitchen. I don't enter kitchen. In the next morning, everybody was sweeping. Of course, I woke up with the money. I was asking for the broom. Me that in my house, I don't sweep in my house. I was not trying to do do. It was very clear that this girl doesn't have to sweep. And said, don't worry, bring the broom. Don't just. It was I'm just saying that no one that room. No one that my sister in law. Both boys, everybody was cleaning the house. I just give me a rag, let me have it. I was just cleaning. They could tell that Auntie Yon, <laughs> you know, but I just had to boy. Same thing, there's an impression. Yeah. So, if I wanted to be myself, yeah. I would get in there, I won't go into the kitchen. Yeah. I'll, I'll be served. Mm. I'll leave the plate. I'll go to, I'll go to my no, room. No, you won't leave the plate. I'll take the That's plate to the kitchen, are, so. which is the very regular. I'm just saying that if I wanted to be myself, mm. I'll wash my own plate. Me, I didn't wash my own plate. I had to wash everything in the point in the when sink. When you come I, back, we'll talk about we'll the talk things about that this. are practical and the things that are not So those practical. things happen. So let's why not pretending as if we don't do it. Let's go on a short break. And we come back, we continue with this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Every morning is an opportunity. Um, how to behave when you see your in-laws. Um, Nima was going to say something. Yes, yeah, so um, Pastor Dejumon talked about coming in. The things that I think are practical. So when you come in the first time, you, of course you pick the first seat when you're offered. Or if you are not yet offered a seat, you sit very prim and proper. That's what I did. You, when you're served, you must appreciate them by after finishing trying to take your dishes. My father on the other side will tell you if they are from a good, warm family, they will not allow you to get into the kitchen. Somebody, because you're not there to serve yet. So you, after you finish, once you're taking up, can I go? Somebody will say, no, no, don't worry, because they're hosting you as well. So it should be both ways. And that was how it was done for me. Somebody took my plates to the kitchen. Mm. I knelt when I came in because I thought that was the rule. But when I noticed the rule of the house, I became very safe. Mm. No need to, <laughs> nee, nobody was but, kneeling anywhere. Yeah. But you know, it is also rule when you see their culture, do not disrespect the Samaka, culture. if you are marrying a you Yoruba know? man, maybe this video is uh, a good advice for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, like, like, she, no, yeah, like she said, see, I'm a very respectful person. Yeah. That's me. Growing up, I was the child that before you, like, if you're around me, before you even ask for water, yeah. I brought water mm -hmm. at a room temperature. Uh, well, uh, that is me. That, that's, my, that's my person, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm, if I'm married to in a culture where people mm -hmm. kneel down, what does it take? I will kneel down now. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem. But like she said, double standards. If your kids are not kneeling down for you, uh. then you want me to come and kneel down. Like, Let me work? take this call. Good morning, Christopher. Are you there? Hello, Christopher. Are you there? alive? Okay, we have some comments on social media. I think we lost that. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, we're going to be wrapping up on this, but I think um, what the pastor said is something that, as I said before, all of us, many women, especially Yoruba yeah. girls that I know, were told privately that when you get to the house, just sit down. Finish don't your go, food if you have don't, you know, just be, family, for but, instance. But in other cultures, it might not be like that. Yes, if you're visiting it might sound as a, a shock Muslim family, people. my father was Tebrig, Ali Suna. If you visit our house and don't finish your food, you have insulted the family. Oh, you don't touch your food. There are so many rules. You see, so just know the rules of the family. Mm. The guy you're dating, ask him, what, what do I need to know about your exactly. people? How do you people do? And I used to joke around. I would just tell them, if you come to my parents' house and my mother makes, because my mother will make her an effort to make your food herself, make sure you eat that food. You will not see someone that will come and think they're doing the right thing. No, I, no, thank you. No, thank you. 
mm. and the food that has been offered to you that has been made Dead. you know prepared Love. for you you know you miss you have a bad uh, upbringing yeah. Yeah. so when we visit any place as a culture no matter how full i am except i'm fasting I will take something from what I'm giving. And if I can, I must finish it. Okay, let me continue. One of the parts the, the past where the that pastor part. said that when you kneel down, mm -hmm. look down. Don't be staring. Look as if you are... You mean kneeling. Be, you don't no, need to look I down, beg, but I kneel, beg, let yeah. them see that you are kneeling. I beg, slavery, slavery has been abolished. <laughs> well, let me answer the main thing I wanted to talk <laughs> yeah, about, right? <laughs> yes. Um, so, I wanted to respond to the man that you said went to visit somebody. I yes. about this so, first off, I respect a man that can sweep the streets to put food on the table my table. I don't care what, what it is as far as you're hard working. So I think that that should be the elastic for parents. Mm. Like, is the man a hard worker? Mm -hmm. And is he able to provide or do whatever it is within him? He, he might come in as a bank manager and lose his job the next day. Anything can happen, but you want to be sure that your daughter is with a man that takes care of his responsibility and will do anything in terms of <laughs> honest work, yeah. right? Even if it might not be the standard that you hope it would be, everybody wants the best, but mm -hmm. a hard worker. It's, it's super important. For okay, me, let me take that this call. Time. Chinedu is calling from Enugu. You're live. Hello, Chinedu. Yeah, good morning, Mara. You're live. Go ahead, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a first time caller. Welcome to the show. Okay, um, you know, this is book. I want to share a personal experience. When, when I was marrying my wife, going to my adult house for the first time, I had no car. I just came out from the port. Come and see this area. Fall on my well iron brocade. <laughs> I entered into my mother in law's house with a wet dress, wet suit, and everything. I had to go to one room. The room I dressed was that iron in bed. <laughs> Try all my clothes. Before I now come and start telling you, I want to marry your daughter. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's serious, I will never forget. Mm. Now, my wife, the same way I took my wife to my house, in, in order to impress my mother, she was my mother in the city, and she broke my father's most important thing. So, no matter how you try to, you know, prepare, don't let my sister Maka say, you say you do have one. I believe it's good for you to just torture yourself and get yourself together when you're going to see your own Lord. But when the mistake happens, you are set in style. Yeah. Because very, there's, very thank you very much, Chinedu. There's a way you go to your, your in law, prospective in law's house, mm. and the mother is in the kitchen, you're not staying in the living room. No, that, no. that is mad. Uh, that's, that's, no matter what culture or what manner. tribe you're from, yeah. you go in the kitchen to support and help them. I mean, so it's just, it's just reasonable. What if Mariam you start was saying, tell you to sit down? To, Mariam, not worry. Mm. You force yourself. Uh -huh, that's another thing. Mariam was saying here that the pastor is only talking about etiquette. We all, in one way or the other, try to imbibe Unibu etiquette. Eating with our mouth, mouth closed, the right cutlery, curtsy, you know how you curtsy um, to the queen. But with the moment we start talking about Nigerian cultural etiquette, we start to shout. So the truth that we all learn, even abroad, when you eat your fork and knife the right way, how to put the wine, how to use the glasses, how to use the napkins, mm. these are things that we all learn. And when you go out, imagine your in-laws parents are inviting you to dinner in a nice world of Astoria restaurant. You are in the hotel, and, you know, you would do a certain way because that's how they were taught. But now, to come to their house, we are shouting, is it an interview? Is it a... Uh, no, but a, you are not... slavery? We are now making look as if no, they are you to you, something else. If you have been well brought up, you will go to a house and you will be respectful. Mm -hmm. You, if you have been taught to kneel, you will kneel. If you have been taught to enter the kitchen, you will enter the kitchen. You will be respectful. Exactly. You will not be a rude person. Exactly. But the minute you are who you are not, mm -hmm. by not her. Because my own fear is when you are who you are not, when you enter inside that marriage, you will show who you are. So, for example, yeah. okay, let, me stay, let me stay with you on that. So, imagine you invite your um your husband your, your son's wife or so your, your family member to a dinner at a nice five-star restaurant in the uk and what who he is is to use his hand he's, he's not going to use a fork and knife because he doesn't know how to use a fork. Well, let me finish now mm -hmm. so he's in the dining room with you and your friends you're calling you all your cousins and family from the uk to come and meet this your son's new wife or your daughter's new husband and he comes in and he puts a fork and knife on this corner 
and said, I'm going to use, I'm going to eat my ham because that's what I, I'm what fine. What is wrong with that? I'm just telling you, mm. we, no, we, now we're saying what is wrong with that. Mm. But the truth is that many of us who condemn that, ah, imagine he came, was then using his hand. He was sniffing, was so open, eating with his mouth open. These are etiquettes that we have been taught not to do, especially when we go to formal dinings. But now when it comes to African setting, we make it look as if you are being forced to act like a slave or forced to um, bid for but an interview. So, yeah, so I'm just saying, how do you now draw the line? Why can't, I'm coming to Waiki on that question. Um, Without him eating rice with his hand? If he's eating rice, because in my own culture, it's Eba and Amala that you eat with your hand. So if it's rice, you decide to eat with your hand, I would say, ah, this one doesn't know how to use knife and fork. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to judge him and say, Use oh, his spoon, that he did not put it on his left hand. Uh, no, I, 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 I would not. I, I, no. I would not. Me too, yeah. I would. All right. so if, if he uses a spoon, yeah. for, for me now, if you use spoon, I don't know. 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 I I am Muslim. If you don't like it, that's your business. I will switch it to that hand, and I will let you know. If, you should, if, if I notice, sorry, I'm Muslim. I only eat with my right. I don't do queens. I don't do with my left. So simple. You explain it respectfully, and you continue. I don't know what Muslims eat with fork and knife. Muslims eat with fork and knife, but okay. can only eat with your right hand. So if you see a Muslim pretending and struggling, that person is just pretending for you. That, or is not a conscious Muslim. So, so uh, I wanted to add that, you know, the, where some people win the enemies, is where you bring those biases. There was this girl who was dating somebody from my place, from the Agbedes. And so she was dating an Agbede guy, but his brother was dating a Yoruba girl. They thought the girl did not know. So my people have this thing of speaking our language and, you know, saying all their toxicity. So the girl will come and say, hey, the girl will kneel down. She's Yoruba. She will say, ah, I mind a pretender. She will say, ah, she's pretending. She will go to the kitchen. She'll, they, you know, the girl that is from their place is hearing them. She will just sit down, JJ, and be looking at them. And they'll be like, this one, they hear what? She won't say anything. When fast forward, the, girl, the Yoruba girl came in. She now became so, she became a tyrant. You want to visit her husband? You did not write us. You didn't call us. You can't just show up, you know, and give them so many rules. She'll come for her like, oh, no, 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 she can't do this. So she decided to say, ah, she was pretending all that time. When she came, and she was herself, were you people even nice at all in your language? You bring your biases, you judge the person. You, when she's herself, you say, no, they did not raise you well. Now, me, they greet so, need down finish. Now, me, they stand on top. You know, all those rules you put down. Over time, you lose the friendship. We took a topic this week on the elders, the uh, aged mother, and I think. Mm. And we said, mm. win the friendship because you're the one who will need it later. Mm. If your, somebody is marrying your brother, it's better for you to be friends with that person mm. from the get go. Let her be her normal self. Just know herself, how she is, okay. and make mm. life easy for everybody. Have a color. Come no to your point. Mother. Sunday, thanks for calling. You're live. Good morning, Sunday. You're live. Okay, go ahead, Amaka. Okay, oh, go ahead. Uh, I just want to, uh, I want to appreciate you on this program, and I thank you before you didn't know your own. I want to keep in something. Now, we are talking about this issue of uh, the first impression from the uh, spouse or probably a gay or so. Now, the issue is, who is to be impressed? Is it the man who wants to take a lady in as a wife or the mother-in-law? You see, in most cases, you see some of these are men, young ladies. I mean, the young men giving the appearance a script to act when they get to their home, especially when they meet with his mother. I don't think this is good enough. You see, you should allow the lady to be what she is. The way she sees things, the way she does things, if they are asking. Okay, I didn't hear him very well, but thank you very much, Mr. Sunday, for sharing your view. So you should, don't give her a script yeah, that she must act out. Uh, if she's a disrespectful person, she's a disrespectful person. Mm -hmm. She comes in, ah, hi. Eh? Hello. Is it me and you say hi? That, that's a different that's thing. Person, eh? You see two old people and you say, hey, hi. Hey, what's up? Mm -hmm. eh? What's up? Yeah. That's not how you greet. Oh, no, no, no normal family will accept that kind of greeting. Ah, what's up? Eh? You may not say anything, you just say, eh? <laughs> ah, hey, this one is an air eh, oh, no, that my son wants to bring into this house. See, where, where, where do we draw the line of not judging people? Because one thing, somebody comes in and says, what's up to you? Mm -hmm. And as a family, you're already judging that. That person's baby, maybe from where he or she's coming from, 
That's how they greet, and that's normal to him. Well, some so, of them are not normal in their family, eh, or they are normal in their own way. So, 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 so I disagree when people say that the Western world that they don't have culture and respect. I disagree because people from the rural home, people, there are people from homes. How you raise your kid is what matters, and people please people. People have culture and respect abroad. And people train their children the right way. So, but even in Nigeria, we also have people that are rude, people that are uncouth. The same way we have every other place yeah. in the world. We, you know the difference between right and wrong. wrong. Just that you've chosen to be a certain way. Mm. Let me go to what I was saying about the eating uh, habits. Like, I grew up in a family where the dining must be set. Cutlery set. You must eat on the dining. That's how I grew up. So, I grew up with that mindset that you must eat properly. Right? But then... Even, as, even for the fact that I grew up that way, I love to eat with my hands. I eat with my hands a lot. So I know how to do my proper fine dining. But then if I'm in a certain way, I'm, 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 I'm always myself. I eat with my hands, right? And I would never look down or judge somebody that wants to for, for using their uh, cutlery in an improper way. Because I'm one of the advocates of people that say this life is too short. Why do I want to make someone uncomfortable in their skin? Because they want to eat food, the basic things. Like, th that's... That's just too basic. Uh, me, they even taught me how to use knife and fork. It's me that didn't hear. Okay, we have to wrap <laughs> up on this. But let me just take this so call and move on to our next topic. Good morning. Thanks for calling. You're live. Good morning, everybody. Morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Mm, you people have been talking there, and I like the woman. That uh, uh, woman preacher. Pastor yes. Adejumo, yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, that is the way people should be, yes. Take it or leave it. On the first day, you don't want to show who you are. The effect of four affect you. If they don't affect you, you can't marry their son. It is not that that behavior of that day is what you are going to be using after all. You are still going to be living with that man, two of you, and they will not see you again. But in the army, just do something to impress them. That's all. So that they can just say you are okay. And after all, when you are with your husband, you can even, you know, be punching his nose. That is the two of you. But you can't try that. Mr. Festus, let me stay with you. Yes. So are you saying that if you were to receive your daughter in law or some or son in law, you expect them to put on an act, put on an act just to you know, to, because you'll be assessing them, right? So, they can, so you can, they can pass the assessments. You're saying that they should put on that act. I don't know whether they are putting it or no, or it's natural. But what is paramount is that I must accept that person. So whether it's natural or fixed, I don't know. Thank you, Mr. Well, Festus. The reason why I wanted him to go to that word assessment, because whether we like it or not, when you go for that first interview, there's an assessment going on. Exactly. So you either pretend it's not there or accept that you're being assessed by the family that you want to go into. So that's what the pastor was saying, that they, you are going for an assessment. They're going to be checking you out. Now, you don't, you don't have to be your real Amaka self or your real Mariah self. But because it's an assessment, the same way when you go for an examination, you study specific for that subject. You don't take all the knowledge from other subjects to come and answer in that question. You are, you are prepared for that specific subject. You go to the examination for that specific subject, not for something else. So if we, as women especially, have accepted the fact that when you're going to see your in-laws for the first time, it is an assessment. And because it's an assessment, you either put on the act, you either behave a certain way, so that that first assessment, you cross it over. So then... So your normal self can I, gradually come out. I Is agree, that what we're saying? I agree it's an assessment, but I know it's a lifelong result. So whatever you put as, a, as your assessment to come in, because somebody has to be impressed. I always say first impression is important. You put up what you can, but not when you are g going there to fake it, you make it kind of an example. Yeah. Fake it all. Okay, so I, someone said to somebody once that my parents would not like a particular girl from this culture. She said, don't worry, when I get pregnant for you, we use pregnancy to bulldoze the away. In. And then the mother-in-law shocked everybody and said, give me my grandchild. I still will not, don't want to see you in my son's house. So, you know, don't fake it, you make it. Don't force anything. You know, being a proper girl, just as like your upbringing, let it show, be, your, be a good girl as you're raised. Don't be a bad representation of your own family at that event, at that, uh, on that particular meeting. And you move past that. 
But I have experienced, I, I stated again, some people will put their biases, not their family's culture. We are assessing a girl, the way you raise your daughters. Not that you're assessing the girl, saying, no, I want you to be like this, but your daughters can do different. Mm, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Let her be able to be herself. My sister-in-law, we, the first day she came, she stayed. We just loved her. Everybody handed over their whatever. We, and she's, we've been like that till date. You, nobody has to test anybody to judge anybody. Why do you have to do that? Why do you have to bring any your biases in? We don't need, we do not expect anybody to need. So people will ask you to crawl from here to Chukutu Kenji. So the girl that come, we need that for them till she enter and then be rude to everybody else. I saw a family where the Yoruba girl came in. She was kneeling down like a cat on, the, on that particular day. After that day, every... And in <laughs> Yoruba custom, like a, cat. a year old. Because we, we've been to, to the I same place. We married from this. the same place. So don't... don't, don't mm. I don't want that pretending. I don't like it. Ahead, so I think that um, assessment should be, more, should be based more on, on um, important things like kindness. Character. Is the girl mm. kind? Kind. So even right. if you want to put up an assessment, you can do something in your house that day that can showcase if that person is a kind person or what would be her reaction in a certain situation. Mm -hmm. Those are the important things. Mm -hmm. Not whether you ate with hand or yeah. cut Larry or nice. whether you knelt down and became a slave nice. and crawled. Like, are you kidding me? Nice. Th those are, this this is, is a marriage. The girlfriend the, washed yeah. clothes and plates like, to, like tomorrow, no day. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, so that, that's, that's, the test. that's a fantastic point. You about so that for if we are all in agreement, that's an assessment. So the, the recipients, as the, the in-laws, mm -hmm. should also know that I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not assessing you based on how you eat, mm -hmm. how you stand, or how that's you sit. Wonderful. I'm assessing you based on character, mm -hmm. on your ability to be kind, to be Very compassionate. Yeah. So there'll be situations that we'll probably put together to mm -hmm. see how you respond. So that will help us assess you as a kind person. So I think that, like, that's, that's, that's important. Good if you kick the dog. Mental. You kick the dog and say, ah, this is a wicked. This one will kick me. Go on, you come in and you, you step on all the you shoes. The dog. You, no, you carry your own shoe. You step on all the shoes and then go one place and pull your shoe. That shows disregard. That shows, you know, those are the kind of tests you should be looking at, not that way I should eat. Then Somebody then that comes eat. in and cannot yeah. neatly put their shoes, that's match all the other shoes, and then go and put yeah. your own one path. Those okay, are the small, small things. I think, small, small things wrap up on this. I think in a nutshell, let's, let's in a nutshell, you have life. comments on social media. Go ahead, please. Ogumola Emmanuel says, if I love and it's a norm in your house for prospective husbands, to sweep the compound before your parents and accept me, before your parents can accept me to marry you, I will sweep the streets safe. <laughs> How they behave in Oyo is different from Anambra. If you know sit well, marry the culture that accepts your ego. Cody uh, Flunky Fair says, God knows I can't impress nobody's future in law. You better take me for me or forget about it. Um, and my future wife, just be yourself. When meeting with your in laws, boo, just know I'm not going to be, you're not going to be anybody's maid. Just remember for me to choose you. And uh, you cannot, you're not going to be anybody's maid for me to choose you mm. and, uh, and take you to meet my, your in laws. You're perfect for me, and you will be loved, not judged by your in laws. Okay. Yeah, today, Shona Ike says the first visit to your in laws is very important because their son has introduced you as his choice. Any normal lady will be on their best behavior so as to make a positive impression. Okay, I'm I think that's all we can take on this segment. When we come back, we want our second topic. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, what an interview! <laughs> <laughs> it's still 7 of 7 and we've been doing a whole lot of protesting, protesting. The only thing that remains is just to carry a placard. It's about 5 or 7 to be honest, because... Ask your question. I have so much to speak about once we finish. We will not give you the time, because it's 7 of 7. I will make the time now! <laughs> he said he will not ask questions about science. He no, 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 plasticity. And based on he asked a question that was subjective <laughs> about high life, <laughs> and he did not finalize his answer about a kuti question where there are only three of us. Editor, scratch this part out. That could out. have possibly <laughs> composed the music. Editor, scratch this part out. Stupidity <laughs> is an act of ignorance. Hey God, my dear. Was composed. By which Kuti? Femi Kuti. Is that your father? Oh God. I'm Shimon Kuti. No, wait. wait Femi Kuti. You said Femi Kuti. Kuti. Wait, wait, wait. You can't be allowed. No, no you've you not asked me anything. Everyone. You've not asked me anything. We, we, uh, so, my final answer. No. <laughs> All I have to say is this show is really about drinking. Yeah, that's the whole idea. The questions don't matter. <laughs> That's the whole Just idea. Just this is out the window. <laughs> With your questions. We have no morals here. On the 7 of 7.
thanks for staying with us. Now we're moving on to our next subject. And as I said, Thursdays, we love to discuss families. So there's another topic that caught our attention. Uh, there was actually a post. Somebody said, a cheating husband who provides for his family is way better than a faithful husband who does not bring food to the table. What are your thoughts on this? And this is an interesting conversation because lots of women send us messages all the time saying that their husbands are faithful, uh, but the problem is that they're not carrying their own weight. Others complain that their husbands are cheating, but they, they, they have everything, but they just hope that he can just come home and stay with them. What are your thoughts? you think it's better to have a cheating husband who actually provides or a faithful one who at least is in the house, even though he's not bringing any food, at least in the house? Call us on 81 Zero seven six four one six seven nine zero nine zero two four one six three four four zero. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. All right, let me come to you. Why you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not casting that. I mean, I prefer, I prefer a cheating husband than a broken. Really? Oh yeah. That will provide. You're kidding ah, me. Yeah. But it's, ah. I thought what happened to companion? You have somebody Which who's companion? always there, talk to Say you. We drink water. But you are, you are, you have you you have the job. At least you are providing. At least so, but because two have become one. So if you are the one that have the capacity to provide, and he's there, at least he's your friend, he's your companion, your best friend, he's there. So don't you think that's a better? It's all right. Amaka, let me come to you. Is... <laughs> okay. What do you think? They want to come to me. <laughs> so number one, I, I, I was, I'll, I'll take this from two perspectives. Okay. The moral perspective, which is that my question is, are they still faithful men? Hmm. Right? I believe ninety nine percent of men cheat. When I was naive, that's when I thought that they were faithful men. Anyway, Are you for real? In the Bible, where have you been hanging well, out, honey? <laughs> so in the Bible, uh, they talk, the Bible talked about a man being a provider. But then, um, the most loved man by God was David, and we know how that went down. So let's put that one mm. uh, on the side. Then the second part um, is the <laughs> then the second part is the fact that. With, uh, when a man can provide, he has a job and everything. Nobody still knows to move, but there's a, a, there's a huge percentage of guarantee that um, there's food on the table. There's no guarantee that a faithful man will not be a cheating man tomorrow. Mm. It's just like Once this. money comes. It just, it just takes a blink of an eye for mm. the, the faithful man to become a cheating man. So mm -hmm. there's no guarantee in that one. So I'd rather hold on to the one that has, I have guarantee that at least you have a job. My children will go to good schools. If they are sick, they good. They can pay for afford. medical fees. They can afford medical fees. At fees, at least there's a guarantee in that part. So, my darling, as long as you're not disrespecting me, I don't know about it because the children people say you don't even know. Kukuma provide for me. I and my children. Faithful man. There's no guarantee that tomorrow night you go outside and meet one girl. You're not fall in love, and so please provide. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let me come to you. This thing for me is disrespect to me. If you cheat on me, it is disrespect. I don't want a broke man. But I don't want someone wealthy and very you disrespectful. You know, the, 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 the honor of chastity, mm. give me. Of, of, of uh, fidelity, give me. Nima. And see, anyway. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying the uh, impractical thing of uh, be broke, 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 and, and just stay there. I don't want that. Yeah, yeah. That's what they're but, saying. No, but, but that, no, that's mm. not the extreme. They're, they're yeah. saying the extreme. Yeah, but this is the extreme. The extreme. The extreme. Yeah, so we don't have to so, discuss the extreme. So Let's the be man realistic. is broke, lazy. He's not hey, willing to try. Hey, exactly. You know? extreme. But the man is cheating, is we wealthy, about, cheating, yeah. disrespectful, bringing all sorts of uh, STDs and all of that. Uh, that, that. Those are two. Those are the two yeah. extremes I don't want. The two, I don't want. Nima. Let's look so, at the best case scenario. Well, Nima, even, 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 even wait. Let's, 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 let's paint it properly because all of us can disagree mm -hmm. with the extremes. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the reality because in the reality, it's not always the extremes. When they say a broke man, it could be somebody who doesn't have a job yet. You well, can even not, have a job. Maybe the money is not enough for yeah. you to be like so, your friend's husband. Uh -huh. They are looking that at him. No, they say no. Because the person does not bring food to the table, that means he does not have a job. Because food. Basic. Okay, so let, 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 let me paint, let me paint the picture let properly. Let me ask you a question okay, me paint the picture. If your husband is the one that will be washing all the plates in the house, be sweeping, and you will be going out to work, will, will you like that? Why, Kay? I have told you, you like I have said it on this table before. In the first four years of my marriage, my husband wasn't working. But it doesn't mean that he was, he, he was washing plates. He wasn't washing plates. Uh -huh. No, 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 no don't, don't put in the extremes. Nobody wants their husband yeah, going to wash plates exclusively. No, I'm saying that the, the, in reality, in the, you have a husband, in the first few years, 
Maybe he didn't have a job. He was still, he was searching. He was constantly looking for. He wasn't working, and you're the only provider. That one is different. Which, no, it's not different though. That that that's the case. Many of those are found. The two and they're, they're, and the other the other part is that he's cheating on you. He has money. He's traveling around the world. He has a house in Dubai. Has a house in London. Everything. You are you are the one in London. And he's caring for you, he's paying school fees and everything, and you're fine. So would you rather that man who has enough money to keep you in London and be caring for you, or a man who is faithful, he's in your house, he hasn't gotten a job yet, he's still working, he's still looking for how to get this, but he doesn't have a job yet. Doesn't would you have, have yet. Doesn't have yet. Because I, I, I've shared this story several times. In the first few years, my husband wasn't working, but today, thank God. He's doing so much better. So would, if, I had, if I'd been a wife, I'd say, ah, no, I want that somebody who is rich. No. You can't, you can't, you can't make that assumption. Did you say rich? Did you say rich? Okay. We sir. are expanding on the conversation. You don't have to go to the, to the one that is, that okay. is rich yeah. and the broke. That's what we said. Okay, let me come to that. So, and I said the two extremes are two impractical. Yes, yes. You know, you can be, you, the man can Everybody be rich. Be by the impractical but you are, you are, your mental health don't affect because you're constantly being chucked down and disrespected. Anyone can be brought into the house, you will shift room. Yeah. Say, you know, you can be sitting. I've seen rich men who will say to their wives, My new wife wants this house, so you have to move. Mm -hmm. That's disrespect. So, you can, the wife will say, Okay, this is the VI house. I want the VI. Tell her to go to Yanokwaja. Yeah, so it's respect. Hey, but it's the same thing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the same thing. So, you know, the painful part, like, the, like they always say, that uh, you don't know the true test of a man. When I say man, he has been both male and female. You know the true test of a man, so it pepe. Pepe don't rest. Mm -hmm. Pepe <laughs> no rest. <laughs> you, so you meet a humble person. <laughs> Very humble person, right? But, and, but I'm not talking about, it doesn't have, has, has, it doesn't have to be a lot of money. Mm. Some people, one million is being rich. To so another person, one mm. billion. One billion. It depends on. But with a man, touch Pepe. Come be man. Where you talk that definition, eh? Amaka. Eh? So somebody with one million that can provide, he oh, can buy land now. He can buy soup. He can buy this and that. He start to make eat I, on top of we'll one million. We make a land now. Ah. No, there are different types of human beings. So the one that will pain me, the one that the one that hurts people and hurts mm. women is the fact that you're a faithful husband. Mm. Let's give you that. You're at home. You don't have a job. Mm. You know, there are two categories to these things. Mm. Then you, every day you wake up and play video game. Mm. Yeah? <laughs> and then, you're, then I'll still come back from work. You won't even say, at least let me be nice. This woman has been out all day, Lagos traffic and everything. I'll still come back at night, cook, do everything. You're still balancing there. You're not even helping out in any way. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right? We have that. Then we have the second part of the, the, the man too, that you're supporting. He says, I don't have a job. And then... That's the most painful part. You still use your car and can carry beep. He will still use your car. He will still touch that, use your money and go and pay for hotel. Eh? As in, when you can be unfortunate and I cannot be unfortunate <laughs> twice. <laughs> Let's put it in perspective. But you don't get a lot of women are dealing with that. You don't get money, you don't see get respect. But a lot of women are dealing with that. That's for unfortunate. So, Amaka, let me give you my You use my money to go and carry woman. You don't have money, you still go and no. Wait, Amaka, let me give you the example of my own personal example. My husband is when you see my husband, he's a man of charisma. As he enters, you can't even intimidate him. There's not a amount of money you want to have that you can intimidate my husband. Mm. So yes, in the first few years, he wasn't, he wasn't working. But in the house, he's not doing anything. He's still the head of my house. And at the time, when I was going through some issues where, I think it was, um, she was a pastor, then pastor Ibuku Awoshika, and I've said this several times where she said, what makes a man a man is not his ability to provide. Mm. It's an ordained position that God gave me as the head of the family. And I was, I was in days that when she said that. And the moment he, she said that, it was a light bulb for me, and it was a, it was, it was a life-changing statement that helped me in my mind, right? stop judging this man because, oh, this is not coming to the end right now. He's there because he's the head of the family, and I respect him for that role he plays. And as the role he was playing, he was able to not, was constantly looking for jobs, online, going around, searching for jobs. He wasn't sitting down lazy. People, family members would know that he was looking for a job. He was sending the CV around the place. He would come and pick you up. He would go out, he would do stuff. He was do, trying to do stuff. Yeah. So he wasn't just lazing around. So there are men like that, they're not lazing around. So because... He was, you don't, all he did not have was just a job. Mm -hmm. Every other thing, leadership, ability, um, charisma, he had it all. So would I still say I would prefer a richer person who is able to provide, but is cheating on me, than somebody who might be broke at that time, mm -hmm. but he's faithful. Yeah. So that's, let's that's put it in proper perspective. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so, you, you this, know, this is a huge exception yes, to the rule. It can't be an exception. No, 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 but it is an exception to the rule because when you sit down in a room of 10 women that have the same situation, only one of them, one out of 10, is like Mr. Brown. 
So when you when you go to when you listen to what's going on with women and the conversations we have with women with our friends and everything, let's be realistic and let's call it space. Let's no, we can't generalize. No, we're not generalizing, Wait. but the majority of people, right? As I, I just and this goes to the men as you're watching this, that you know, you need to reciprocate, especially when a woman is supportive to you. Mm. Because it also affects our mental health and then what we also teach our daughters, right? Because because majority of the time when women support and the woman holds you down. It take, as in very few men stick to that woman and stay faithful when the tables turn. And it's very painful when a woman is holding you down because that's who we are as women. We are nurturers. We are like mothers. We cover the man. Do you understand? And then the woman does that for you. You still use that to still do the same thing that a rich man. Not be everybody. See, to, for, for a man to cheat, eh, you suppose to reach a certain level. Not be everybody get the right. Even, no even King David for Bible. Like, you've never finished in, taking care of your responsibility. You want to go and... See why they talk to women? With the truth, we will go for Are you sweating? She's sweating. Is that it? Yeah. 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 New Hapik Sachet. It has a thick formula, so all you need is just one sachet for your toilet bowl. It gives 10 times better cleaning and big savings too. Wow! Hell it's downright time to speak. With the Gen Z perspective. Hey, for me this and you're like, mm, this one, this is Sharma, this is Sharma. Saying it, not the way they want it. I don't think I would budget more than 25k for a first date. Yeah, bird. The Generation Z are ranting. I was two minutes after the minus three years, please. Stop showing me. I don't want to see it. I don't want to Gen Z, express yourself. How long will it take for you to kiss then? Even if it's not sexual interpretation. The conversation just got Gen Z. Do it, love. Lagos is the most visited state in Africa as the fifth largest economy on the continent. Covering the state and its government, it's no me feet, it's a busy beat. We go beyond the curtain of tapes to travel in far into the deep. I want to thank the Lagos state government for the healthcare facility. To bring stories that cut across all spectrums. The greater Lagos shall be ours. We tell you stories that define our collective well-being as Lagosians. Amadido Jasalamadini, I live in Lagos, inside Lagos. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing if we prefer a, uh, a faithful husband who doesn't provide to a cheating husband who provides. Uh, you're going to take a few comments on social media? Or I, mean, I, I was going to say, I wasn't going to take any comment. I was going to say, if you are faithful and then you are not even working, you are just sitting down in the house, it's me working, I will go out and come back. It's me that will even beg you, oh yeah, oh, go and cheat, at least, maybe you will be doing <laughs> go something. Go and find work, at the end. He's not go and cheat. Nah, because, but, because it's not Okay, is it that we don't, we don't honor respect again in marriage? Uh, absolutely. Is that we don't honor, we don't honor um, that, that maybe, chastity? Maybe he doesn't want to work, maybe he just likes but, that life. But for so us, isn't it better that he could cook cheats? Like it, for a woman to, no, at like least it, for a woman to <laughs> even consider preferring a cheating husband, is that we don't, we don't value okay. respect in marriage you anymore? You women are judged for okay. this thing. Women will t tell you, oh, he's a king. Oh, he's a millionaire. Okay, so the, the sin is not so, so much a sin. But if it was a man that, you know, both of you are starting at a small st stage, you would say, no, I cannot forgive you. I will kill him. I will this and that at, at him. Why are we, why are we like no. this? 
So, you know, so, I, don't cheat. So, okay. don't yeah. lazy. Don't broke. So Just you, be a good so husband. You find, that, you find out that most churches, majority of fact, 99% of churches are cancelling. They will always say that. They don't used to leave even our own uh, parents. They say, they don't used to leave man because he cheated, though. That is not a good reason to leave your marriage, oh, because <laughs> a man cheated, though. And that used to pay me, eh? When I hear that, I say, what kind of, what kind of talk is this one? But when you look at it, eh, you now ask yourself, you do want to break your home because, or whatever. Me, me, I'm not married, so when I get there, I will know eh, how I will feel. <laughs> but for me, I feel that the most important thing here is being with a man that has a sense of responsibility. Because at least when you're making certain choices, we should try to, I'm a very practical person, mm. I'm, a, I'm, I'm an overthinker. So I try to weigh the indices, right? Even though things still change. So for me, I'd rather hold on to a man that has a sense of responsibility because when a man has a sense of responsibility, it is not to you. It's about him mm. and how he yeah, treats other people, his parents, other people around him, and you. Because a man that has a sense of responsibility, whether he has money or not, he will try to take care of certain responsibilities to mm. the best of his ability, right? Yeah. My kids mustn't go to a one million naira school. They can go to a 10,000 naira public school, but he's making sure that that 10,000 naira is provided for. That's yeah. one. Exactly. When it comes to cheating, you cannot guarantee cheating. You cannot guarantee someone's emotional state. You cannot guarantee how a man is going to feel today, the next minute, to tomorrow. No, you cannot guarantee how a human being is mm. going to feel. You cannot guarantee whether someone is going to be faithful or whether they're going to cheat because you don't know their mental and emotional state. So i rather hold on to what I can have a certain um, level of guarantee over what I can. But why, but why do we put um, security, financial security, over being faithful? Because there was a time where we didn't care how much money men had. So, it was all about he was there. I remember growing up to feel like, don't, don't worry about the money. Don't worry, just stay with this man. He's faithful. He's at home. He's a companion. Because you're 60, 70, you're 60s. And aside from Waikid, I'm still in the other room. Most 60, 70 year olds are no more in the other room. They are looking for companions. They are just they are looking for companionship. They they're 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 Maybe I will see something to console myself. <laughs> we are not coming to our side. I am very trying yeah. to make sense of. You know, when we are coming to our side, side. I am not this particular case bicycle. till divorce. I handled it. The man will not provide. In fact, when he has money, he will say, if I give her now, she'll become proud. He will give the outside chicks, you know, and then left the wife at the same level for 20 years that he married her. So maybe he was giving her 2,000 naira when he married her. Is that 2,000 he was giving her after 20 years? And they had five kids. She did everything by herself, and she knew he was cheating. So she was, that's a different arrangement. But now that you have a good guy, someone who is trying, mm. just as Amaka said, who meets you halfway, who does what he needs to do, who does not leave his kids unattended, he doesn't leave their, them unfed, he doesn't leave them unsheltered, yeah. he just doesn't have as you would like, yes. because your friend is in a Lexus and you are in a Toyota, uh, yeah. if I a golf. And you're not saying, oh, you'd rather, no, be, with rather be with a rich man. That's, 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 that's what we are saying. saying. Yeah. a man that cannot put food on the table. He eh? cannot even provide it. There's some men that are not able to provide it because they don't have a job at this moment. doesn't mean they don't have it in the future. Listen, right? I don't want you will see that they are looking for work. You will see that they are not lazy. You will see. You will know now that whether he can provide this and this and this for me. He's not a lazy man. He's a different thing when the man is a lazy man. Oh, okay, but I do know there's some women today that they don't have, they, they, they don't have enough um, staying power, mm. even for a year, two years. Mm -hmm. Many women today would not have that staying power to stay but with a man. It's, it's, it's quite painful. Yeah, it's quite painful. It's Many women would say, after one year, six months, a man, they're wondering, ah, what's going on? And they start complaining and they want to walk away because their husband doesn't have a job. He doesn't have a, Today. It's we sad. have that. The taste is big. No, it's, and it's they are really about taste. Just that they just no, feel no, no. they are really. No, the it's taste sad. is big. You just want the big life. No, it's more better for worse, right? Because you know we keep saying uh, money, food on the table. We should also look at the bit as in the, the profound and important things like health. Anything can happen to anybody. 
Anybody can have a cardiac arrest. Anybody can just have brain and yeah. Anything can happen. I want to have a partner that holds you down regardless Thank of. You. And that also has to do with money, right? But I just want you to have a sense of responsibility as a human but being. you guys have not discussed love since money. Nobody here has talked about I love. If I love somebody, regardless of he has a job, she doesn't have a job, I will stay with him. That means you, you guys, you guys. Or not, you will stay with him. So I'm saying, so the, 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 the love factor, nobody has mentioned love factor here. Because the love factor. The love factor is very with whether it's cheating. With that, whether it does not have money. The love factor works in both situations. So why would you leave? Why would you leave a man who doesn't have a job? Mm. If you love him, if you love somebody from the bottom of your heart, mm. so he has a job, doesn't have a job, mm. he is providing, so not is providing. Okay. He's not as he's there. Really you love the man. Why would you, 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 you leave a cheating man because you love him? You say you love him deeply. So for better, for worse. Hey, you deep. stay with him. Yeah, not the same matter. I, love. I can't commit my. I can't commit love. We love pay your children school kind of fees. <laughs> love. Don't cheat, oh. uh, Let's the the comments. Woman says some husbands are not lazy, but they keep doing the same things over and over without results. Mm. Nothing is coming out of it. If cheating will make you provide, I beg, right on. Says, <laughs> regardless of wealth or status, mortal, uh, mortality, fidelity, and humility are choices individuals can consciously make. A cheat remains a cheat, irrespective of circumstance. Should my status improve, I am mindful of the relationships and behaviors that can derail them. Uh, Cody Flood says, the man cheating and gallivanting, auntie that, sees, auntie that man sees you like one of his furniture. You know, there was a story that we know about that the lady who, whose husband wasn't doing much. Then they met another female. The female was the one that was trying to help that woman, help, no, help the husband. The man. Help the man. So, you know, she accepted that friendship because she realized, okay, you're helping my husband to get a job. Mm. Unfortunately, the man ended up going away with this no, with the woman. Sorry, baby. So, now, the woman is blaming herself. I should have never allowed this initial relationship. When you were talking about that, I was just remembering that these things happen. Where you allow your husband to say, I should be like, I'd rather him go and let him go and meet somebody else. I beg, have maybe to provide. Because when that relationship happened, the man was providing. Because the woman was giving him access to contracts, to jobs. And then he got there and she was happy, happy. And now he's working. But unfortunately, it came at a cost. Because she then eventually lost her you husband. Know those after decisions that. are tough. It could have been that at the time the man had to come down mm. to, to, to just so that I can provide mm. that woman's level to provide for her. If mm. he would have felt, oh, you, you would not have stayed with me for how I was or wait the wait. Mm. So since this one is the one providing and making it happen, let me just go with her because she's ma making her own sacrifice. Because mm. something must give mm. in that relationship. Mm. Mm. If a man is going to build his wealth from stage to stage, a good man, build his wealth from stage to stage, are you willing to wait the wait that man will see? Because when we start to pressure, ah, all my friends are using the, the 15th iPhone now and I have not used it put him under that pressure. They are using this house and big cars. And when the man finally has somebody who is making it happen, you'll be like, you did not sacrifice anything. You pressured me to go to this person. So he's, you were willing to lose me to that mm. person. Mm. Which woman will allow I you to, to go and date somebody? Mm. You so know why I disagree? First of all, uh, nobody can love you more than you love yourself. Let's go back to you, say, talking about love. If I, if I can love you, I have to love myself. I cannot mm. give you what I do not have. So we we're, we're creating a perception, perception here as if that the man has to make money or provide for you. The man is doing it for himself. I need to love myself. The reason why I'm here this morning is because mm. I'm, I'm, I want to provide for myself. Mm. I want to do better. Mm. A man is going to work hard, make money for himself Self. first before you as the wife. Mm. We need to get that straight. Mm. So when we're talking about uh, 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 anything we're talking about, we need to put that into perspective. Yeah. That the, the, the people are self... Human beings are innately selfish, and yeah. the self-love prevails self over anything. Mm. And if someone is, is uh, trying to get rich or follow another woman that feels that he feels that he's going to give him better opportunities... In it's terms not for of the family, it's for himself. It's not for his it's family, self. it's for himself. He has nothing to do with his wife. It's about him. Yeah, it's selfishness. It's selfishness. Yeah. Mm. And, and even the one that is still at home doing nothing, not looking for work, not doing anything. No love himself. Eh? You know, love is not we're going to be wrapping up very soon. Let's take a few comments on social media so we can wrap up on this. So, a woman who, who is willing for the husband to cheat with another woman so that she can have a good life, mm. is that sacrifice? You have sacrificed the man. No, that's not good life. life. No, uh, that's, that's the uh, different thing. Uh, no, it's also self-love. Uh, He's the one that wants to cheat. He has no, nothing no. to do with you. Okay, we have the conversation. I'm married to you and I'm mm. having the conversation with you. Damaka, 
This I'm sacrificing you because you've not been working. Wait, you've been at home sleeping all day. And suddenly, how many me. men? Even the ones that are like that, how many men have that conversation? I'm looking at Sasamaka, don't worry. You see this uh, contract, I want to get it mm. to change our lives. Mm. Uh, but I need to sleep with that woman. And you did not even show small something. Like, how many men were actually coming? Do you know that there's a percentage of jealousy that is how many? I bet you there's a percentage of jealousy that is part of love. percent of men will not even come to have that conversation with you. Just say, my friend, But they did. We are saying now, now they did. They did now. We don't know that thing. No, no, it's not, not possible. Okay. It's not possible. No man will come and tell you that, that he me, wants to go and cheat. Let me, no. let me take a few comments and then we wrap up on this. We have to go. Any comments, YK? Most uh, comments. So, according to Flexi, I should tell Amaka, that Amaka, I am among the 1% of faithful men who no. Faithful men exist, and I am one. Uh -huh. See? Without asking, has money reached his hand? Has Pepe lagged his hand? Has Pepe flexed? Has he touched Pepe? Have, have you touched Pepe? Have you touched Pepe? Pepe? Until a man is very filthy rich. That's why we will know whether you be but faithful like, or not. People like, there's some rich folks in Nigeria that, that, that I don't believe cheat. I've seen their, them with their families. I don't know them personally. But I think that they are... They're, 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 no, only them, no. <laughs> okay. I've seen some... Yeah, I'm not dear. Let me go to YouTube. There are no more comments. you have a comment, anyone? Amaka? Okay, no. so on YouTube, um... <laughs> Why do you have any? You have <laughs> one minute left. <laughs> Someone says, this anti Amaka na wa. <laughs> I can't wait. We're all, we're all waiting for Maka's wedding. This anti Amaka na case. We're all waiting for Maka's wedding. Okay, we'll see. Um, hey, the husband, me and my husband, the husband will carry me like eggs. Yeah. Aku, <laughs> 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 and then I jaw, look tomato jaws. <laughs> okay, somebody said, why is Nima taking us to the category of those not contented now? Uh, we're talking of basic needs. Well, um, uh, Paul Michael says, run. that is the truth. If the man can't provide for a very long time, love will be bitter. Daniel right. Balogun says, why can't the husband wash plates? Nobody the plates his family use chop. Okay, that is all we can take on today's show. Hope you learned a few things as we have. Uh, we're going to see you tomorrow. Bye for now. It's good Friday tomorrow. Yes, mm. I'm probably... Bye, Free John. Please, all the okay. aunties that always send me Free John. Please, yeah, exactly. I am That's waiting it. for the Free John. I can't wait. No see you it's tomorrow. To, um, Bye. Bye for now. <laughs> have one. It has a tick formula, so all you need is just one sachet for your toilet bowl. It gives 10 times better cleaning and big savings too. Wow, hello! Sparkling clean toilet with Hapix sachet. Hmm. So happens behind the curtains of a man's mind. Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. 
And yes, you guessed it. Women. So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this. Water is essential for life, yet millions around the world still lack safe water. World Water Day serves as a reminder for the importance of water conservation, access, and sustainability. Every Drop Counts aims to raise awareness and inspire action towards ensuring a sustainable water future for all. Join in promoting peace through this water campaign, because when we safeguard water, we sow the seeds of peace for generations to come. This is not just a campaign, it's a call to action for individuals, communities and policymakers to recognize the importance of water conservation and equitable access to clean water. I mean, water can be an instrument for so many things. Water can be a weapon. Uh, sometimes water can also be a trigger. And lastly, most importantly, water can be an instrument for peace. Boiling of water is the safest, easiest and fastest route to getting clean, portable water. It is said that three out of every ten Nigerians do not have access to clean, portable water. As a doctor, there are a host of diseases that could be transmitted via use of unsafe water. Some of the diseases commonly, in fact, is a diarrhea. There are some others, such as schistosomiasis, which can cause uh, quite some very serious health um, challenges. And in the long run, it could even cause things like a bladder cancer, trachomatis, which could lead to blindness. Can you imagine that just from unsafe water? At TVC Communications, we know that by working together, we can ensure a sustainable water future for generations to come.